Okay, it looks like everybody's in, so let's kind of get started. My name is Nicole Flutie, and I'm with Office Tools. I am the project manager for Office Tools, and I've been in this industry for nearly a decade, so I have a wealth of experience and knowledge I'd like to share with you guys today about Office Tools and how it pertains to the tax and accounting profession. If you have any questions along the way, you can do you can list those through the GoToWebinar area. There's a question section at the bottom. And we'd be more than happy to reach out to you and answer any of those questions that you have or providing more in-depth uh, demo if you have more specific questions that you'd like to have answered that may not be covered in this demo today. So let's get started. Let's talk about Office Tools. So on the screen here is our practice management application. And I'm going to break it down into three sections so we can kind of understand um, you know, the flow of office tools, the flow of the data, and why we've done it in this way, why we've been so successful in organizing data in the way that office tools does. So off to the left, let's take a look here, we've got our contact list. Our contact list contains everyone that we do business with, right? We want to list, um, you know, our individual clients, our corporate clients, our vendors, our prospects. It's a housing place for any type of contact, okay? So that, again, is our client list. Running right along the top of Office Tools here are a few tabs, and these tabs pertain certain and pertinent information for that client. So as you can see, I am on ABC Company, and under the Contacts tab for ABC Company is all of their information, uh, address information, telephone numbers, and even a little bit about what kind of corporation they are and those pertinent details. So if I were to navigate to the next tab, such as notes, to-dos, or calls, that information is just going to pertain to ABC Company. So again, the navigation on the left is going to dictate the data that shows in the center here underneath all the corresponding tabs. And as you see, we've kind of broken it out from contacts to really you know, contact management with notes, to-dos, and calls. We have a full scheduling system. We have full project management, which is due date tracking, all the way from tracking tax returns to audits to bookkeeping and anything really that you want to track the progress and status of. We have full time and billing system along with document management. So the third part of Office Tools is down here at the bottom. We've reserved the area down here for the staff. This is their staff activity list. This is where anything that is assigned to an employee in your firm um, will have access to. They will be assigned any sort of task, it will show up here. It's like their own personal inbox, right? It's also due date specific, so nothing on their list is going to show up until it's due. And we've got all these great parameters in Office Tools and settings to dictate when you want items to show up on their list and when you don't, right? Because you don't want to work from a list that's, you know, got 500 items on it because we haven't organized it by date, and Office Tools does that automatically for you. So you can come in here and see items that are past due, things that are coming up in the future, and you can organize it in any sort of way that you want to. So the value and beauty here as an, as an owner or manager is you can come in and look at any one person's activity list and see what's really going on for today. Gives you the ability to reassign items for staff who may be not coming in or who are overworked. Whatever those situations are, we've provided the tools for you to manage those things. So those are the three parts of Office Tools. Uh, again, the client list, the data in the center, and then your own personal activity list at the bottom. So let's go through each tab in Office Tools. I'll give you a snapshot of what it looks like and, and the data that it pertains to. So again, back to contacts, we are going to house all contact information here along with any additional contacts. So we can see that Mike Smith is the CPA for ABC Company, but maybe I want to look for the CEO or there is somebody else that I do business with for ABC Company and I'd like to look up their information. I can do that by coming here to additional contacts and I can either use these items here to move forward through those contacts or I could click on the summary view. 
When I click on the summary view, it's going to give me a list of everybody that's associated with ABC Company, and I'm able to look at their information, either give them a quick phone call or send them an email. So here you can see I've got alternate contacts and for this client. So this is a corporate client. So if we were to look at an individual client, such as, you know, uh, let's take a look here such as Alan, I could see if he had anybody related to him, uh, a spouse, um, a child. Uh, at this point, there isn't anybody here because this more contacts isn't highlighted, but if there were any more additional contacts, I'd be able to access them very quickly. I can also see who's also associated with ABC Company by right-clicking on them in the client list and selecting more contacts, and I have quick access to all of those individuals. I can also see who's related to them. So I can see the relationships, who's the attorney for ABC Company, who else they do business with, that sort of thing. So again, we're here to build that relationship, that contact relationship, and all those pertinent details by quickly adding them to the database and then also accessing them in those quick setup features. So let's talk about notes. Uh, notes is just a general area of where you can store information for the client. It's a, a gathering, a housing for just that miscellaneous information that shouldn't be left on sticky notes on your desktop or written down on a notepad that you reference every six months. <laughs> it needs to be digital. So take all that paper, make it digital here, and put those notes uh, for this client. I see people uh, log their client's QuickBooks uh, usernames and passwords in here so they have quick access to those QuickBooks files and can you know, maintain that information again without having to reference those, those files. To do's and calls are really virtually the same thing. They're a call to action. Uh, these items will hit your activity list. So if you wanted to create a call for someone in your office to give ABC Company a call on a specific date, you would do so by clicking the plus sign. I'll give it a minute here to load. Associating that call to the staff member that you want to, to, to do the work. We've got the date and time here, so maybe I don't want them to give them a call today, but it's tomorrow. And I want them to contact them um, about the bookkeeping work. And they were missing some bank rec information, okay? So at this point, I want them to contact Mike Smith at ABC Company. And this is the number that I want him to contact him at. So once I hit save here, so we're going to tie this into the activity list, I can then reference John's activity list down here at the bottom. And we can see that, that tomorrow he will be contacting ABC Company regarding that bookkeeping work and the missing rack. Okay. So again, Office Tools forces you to become organized. Uh, in order to create a call or to do or really anything in our software, you first have to have a client. And we know that by who you have selected in the client list. You also have to associate it to a staff member, which is so valuable. So it's not lost somewhere in, in the ether. It, it is associated to someone in your office. It must have a date and it must have a time. So that way, you are now forced to put in those details, and at that point, it will always be an item that is trackable in your system that you can find for historical purposes, or again, more recent, uh, that will hit somebody's activity list that work in the future will show up at the date that you want it to. So again, we're forcing everyone to become organized by making those items required fields in Office Tools. Let's talk a little bit about our schedule. So we've got a full scheduling system here. This is great. Um, the beauty of it and what differentiates us a little bit from Outlook is that you can see multiple calendars at the same time. And you can even undock the calendar, as I did here, and put it up on your other monitor. So it's open and running throughout the day. I'm also able to set availability on here. So if we've got a CPA that's only available in the afternoons or in the mornings, I can go ahead and show that on here um, so then nobody can book an appointment when that CPA is unavailable or when you're unavailable. 
Let's talk a little bit about our project tracking here. So we've got, again, our full due date monitoring system. And right now, I'm looking at a 2017-1120 tax return. I can see what status is it, it is here by this reference in the right-hand corner. It's called unprocessed. So I know that no work has been done on this project. But I can see that we've done a little bit of work because someone's put in some time. So now I can come into the work list budget and say, what's going on? What do we got going on with this project? Okay, so I see that Joe Demo has got an input and prep assignment, and he started that back in March. What's going on with Joe? Now I know the status of this project. I can go talk to him about it and get more pertinent details. I didn't have to yell down the hallway, make a bunch of phone calls. I knew within three clicks, that they had a 2017-1120 tax return, what status it was in, and who was working on it. That is valuable. And I don't know if you're really gonna find that anywhere else in the, the, the marketplace, a product that's gonna very quickly with the navigation tell you exactly what you're looking for and provide the information for you to make a decision or find out the status of something. So now that we know that, we can follow up on this information and I can see anything else that's going on with this client. So I'm gonna click on summary. And in the summary here, I can see all the corresponding projects that we're working on for this client. Um, we've got another 10, 11, 20 uh, tax return. We've got some bookkeeping work we've got for them and some individual projects, you know. So if I open the bookkeeping project here, again, I can take a look at it. I can see when this project is due. If it was a tax return, I could place it on extension, which replaces the due date, and that new due date will flow down to all of the uh, reminders that we have that will hit your activity list, so then you don't have to go through and manage those sort of things. I can also estimate how much this project is going to, to take us to do. I can estimate it by hours, and I can even set up a fee in here that allows me to budget for this project so that I can see how much work has been done, what do we tell the client we're going to charge them, and are we in line with that? Are we spending too much time or not enough time? Is this project profitable or not? Again, by setting up just a few of those values, which you can actually set up globally so that you don't have to do it every time you create a project, you can then find out very quickly, do we need to hire more staff? Do we need to increase our prices? Those tools, they are very valuable to help you make those business decisions um, for the future. Or to plan for you know, uh, how much work you are taking on. So we have plenty of project reports that you can run that will tell you when things are coming due, who they're assigned to, right? And that's what everybody wants to know right before tax season. What is going to happen? <laughs> and office tools can help with that. Again, you'll come in here, you'll create all your projects, you'll budget them, and then we've got those really great project reports. Let's actually navigate to just a couple of them so I can show you what I'm talking about. So by clicking on reports, I can click on project reports, and we'll dive right into it. So here we've got our default reports that you can run. Uh, our most popular one is a due date report. I'm just going to open it up and see if we've got something in here. Um, I, you've got plenty of filters you can use. You can filter it by account manager. You can create contact groups if you only want to see a particular sort of project. You could also run the reports by project type. So again, we've got tons of filters, tons of grouping options. Really anything that you can think that you'd want to do or want to see from a project report We've probably got it for you. You know, we've built office tools uh, based upon our client suggestions over the years. And reports is one of those things that we've really heeded their, uh, our client's advice and we've taken into consideration. So honestly, I think we've got a plethora of information for you to, to run reports on. So here we've got that bookkeeping uh, project that we were looking at. We can see who it's with how many days it's been in the office, when it's due, the current status. Again, here's that budget information we're talking about. And then we can also add in the profitability. So again, we've really got some great tools for you to manage your firm um, as it pertains to workload and incoming work. Another part of our project system is we also track missing information. So we can track in here that 
we're missing that bank reconciliation. And until we get it, there isn't a whole lot we can do with this project. So we can edit this. We can track that information, bank statements, who the issuer might be, if that's something we know. And now I've got one missing information item here. And I can actually email this to the client and tell them, we're missing this. Would you be able to provide this information? And I can do that by clicking on this email button here, email missing info, and off that information goes. I don't have to retype it up. I can simply, the program will grab that data set, throw it into the email, and all you have to do is hit send. Pretty cool. If I wanted to move this project along, let's say we got their missing information, all I have to do is click on assign work, choose the status of the project, who I want to assign it to, let it hit that person's activity list. So now that it's shown up on John's activity list, I can go ahead and complete that item. And once I do so, I will be prompted for my time card, which is another big workflow process we have built into Office Tools, is that we track time as we go. And the value of that is I'm tracking information immediately. Um, I'm not going back through my day and trying to remember how much time I spent on everything, which you know, gives us a uh, pause for maybe miss keen information or not being as accurate as we probably could be. So what we'll do here is we'll fill in this time card. It will prompt me for the next assignment for this project. Automatically, we've got that built into the system. So now I've just moved this project, track time to it, the project updated with that information, and it is now the most current information is in an office tools, right? So the current status of everything is now here. So if I were to go to the timesheets, I could take a look at the time cards here that we've been tracking as we've been completing items throughout the day. This is just completely invaluable. And this procedure really happens with completing any item in Office Tools off of your activity list. So if I was to complete a call, I would have the same thing happen. It's going to prompt me for my time card. And I could go ahead and put in how much time I spent, identify the code, Again, we can have those projects associated to a specific work code, even the assignments, so then I'm not relying on my staff to choose the right information. And then I go ahead and click OK. Again, that time card is ended here. So again, Office Tools is that repository for adding, creating, and tracking everything in a single product for everyone to reference and be on the same page at all times. And that's just completely invaluable. So let's take a look at billing for just a moment. So, you know, we've been talking about tracking our projects and tracking the time to those projects. And at this point, I'm creating WIP. So here we've got our total WIP for this client. We've got our total hours. We have it in dollars. And I can come in here and choose the time cards that I would wish to invoice for them. So I click on invoice now, create an invoice as simple as that finalize it, send it out the door, and I'm done. And we have plenty of invoice types for you to choose from. I believe uh, we've got 11 here, and beyond that, we have different levels of detail once you choose the invoice type that you're looking for. Again, we can get very granular and detailed here. You can have so many preferences, whether you want to you know, have a header or show rates on your invoices, whatever it is, we can probably accommodate it. Finalize the bill, I can get it sent out, and we're done. We can also create a payment uh, once they've paid that invoice. We have a great integration with APX um, where you can process those credit cards very quickly or any ACH transactions. And then last but not least, we've got a full document management system. Anything you can save to your computer, you can save to office tools. We pride ourselves on our ability to organize a file structure on your network, but giving you a clean interface to reference your documents. 
These are all the documents for ABC Company, and I can quickly search for anything I'm looking for. Let's say I'm looking for their 1120 tax return. Nothing there. Maybe their bookkeeping. Let's see if they've got any bookkeeping items. So just by searching for uh, you know, a word, a phrase, I can find that file very quickly. I can even organize all the files by these uh, filters here, by year, by project, by category, by staff. Okay. So again, anything I can save to my computer, I can save here. And we create a file structure for you behind the scenes and we organize it. So we're not a proprietary uh, document management system. Also built into our document management is a portal for the clients. So anything I have in here, I can send to my client via the secure portal. I can also uh, request an e-signature on any of the 1040s in Office tools that I have, um, or the, I think it's the 8879, the request to e-file. So we have a complete e-signature process built into Office tools. And then we have an amazing integration with File Center, which um, allows, File Center allows you to use their markup tools to do all sorts of things with PDFs, Word documents, and such. So really, we've got this enterprise document management system that is completely integrated into Office tools, integrated into your portal, and again, you've got that e-signature capability. To set up Office tools, to get rolling with it, I'm going to go to the global options here. This is, this is really the housing for setting up everything in Office tools. You can access how to set up your contacts, your documents, and invoicing all these great features. I would recommend that if you wanted to get started with Office tools and you didn't want to do it alone, that you would uh, you know, request help from us. We've got this great training resource center. Um, we've got consultants that you can um, sit with for however long I think you can schedule one hour increments with them. And you can sit down, listen to their experience and their expertise and let them help you set up office tools. They're gonna to do an interview process and go through, um, you know, asking you how your firm works, how you do things, and how we can bring all of those processes into office tools. So our consultants are trained to um, advise our clients um, with the foundation of tax and accounting knowledge. So what that means is they have spent time with countless clients over the last few years gathering their information and providing best practices for you so that when you start with office tools, we can help you along the way. Um, we don't really train on any other application other than office tools. So again, you're really talking to the experts um, when it comes to practice management. So don't, don't be afraid to uh, get started with Office Tools, ask for help. If you'd like to know more about what we do, a uh, more in-depth demo, we can definitely do that for you. Uh, you can contact Abacus next. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of uh, consultants who could advise you on what parts of Office Tools you might want to implement, um, any sort of pricing that you guys would like to know. So again, contact us, and we'd be more than happy to assist. So that will probably close out our demo for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the question and answer section, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or if you'd like a demo, you can also, instead of going to the website, you can request it through the, the question section as well. We'd be more than happy to contact you and do that. So have a great day, guys, and hopefully we'll talk soon.